Hello everyone and welcome to this Meta Product Manager mock interview. Today we are doing an analytical thinking question and with me is a former Meta Product Manager or Facebook Product Manager. Um, he's also a coach on our platform and I'm really happy that he can join us today to be my candidate. It's Damien. How are you doing, Damien? Hi, Tom. How's it going? Uh, my name is Damien Peters. I'm a former Meta, um, at the time, Facebook product manager. I was there uh, for around three and a half years and worked on location products along with advertising measurement and really happy to work through this mock with you. Yeah, thanks for being with us today. Um, if you're ready, let's crack straight straight on with a question. It's an analytical thinking question. It's a, it's a metric change question. And uh, let's get into it. Sounds great. So, Okay, the question I want to ask you is, Instagram news feed engagement drops 10%. Let's imagine that I'm your data scientist. How can we discover what's happened? So great question. Um, when there are large metric drops like this, it's, uh, it can always be, really be devastating and uh, confusing to the PM to understand how to solve this and, and come up with this, uh, come up with a solution here. Uh, one thing I wanted to start with is understand a little bit more what we mean when we say engagement across um, in Instagram. Are we talking about time spent or likes, comments, uh, shares, um, messages, things along those lines? Sure. We're talking about basically a drop in time spent. Um, so related metrics such as likes, comments, shares, um, they all went down as well. Um, but then outside of the feed related metrics, there wasn't a big drop. Okay, great. Now, looking a little bit deeper into the metrics, uh, thinking through um, time spent, we also have uh, other feed, you know, directly feed related things like likes, uh, comments, shares, saves. Uh, then we also have messaging, in-app messaging, messaging between stories, uh, group chats, things like that. Uh, did we see a drop in any particular metric significantly hard or any group of metrics? No, so just the ones, um, just the ones kind of related to, to the time spent on the feed. So okay. um, things like messages and, and things unrelated to that, they didn't see a significant drop, no. Okay. And then did we see a big drop in terms of specific types of content that people engage with in the feed? For example, uh, image posts versus uh, Instagram stories versus Instagram reels? Um, no, no change there. Okay. Sounds great. All right. So it sounds like concluding, um, we saw a drop in, in we saw a 10% drop in engagement. It's primarily limited to the feed itself and actions uh, surrounding the feed with time spent taking the, the biggest hit, it sounds like, out of that. Yep, absolutely. That's right. In any metric change question, it's very important to start off by carefully clarifying the terms of the problem. Here, engagement can mean different things in different products and contexts. So it's crucial to understand exactly what type of engagement we're looking at. If the interviewer is thinking about time spent and you're thinking about likes, you'll get into trouble. Damien does this very well, asking the right questions to get a more accurate picture of the problem. He should probably also have asked about the time period. Did the drop in engagement happen over one day or one week, for example? Okay, so with looking when um, investigating a metrics change, I like to think at at a high level with different buckets and different areas of where, you know, different causes in different buckets, and then kind of go through systematically the different buckets and see if we can see some interesting data or trends that would uh, give us some insight there, if that sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, so I want to start with thinking through uh, three different buckets. Um, Potential changes that are internal to uh, to Meta, things that we did that would cause a change like this or cause an error in reporting or analytics. I also want to think about external changes that would have come from uh, the competitor or the market, changes in uh, taste or a competitor launching a, a different, a similar product um, that would take away users. And then lastly, I like to think about kind of act of gods or acts of God or external factors that come from the environment, such as... Um, a change in the uh, um, mobile ecosystem, uh, a power outage, uh, things along those lines, uh, if that sounds good. I think I'll start with some of the internal changes to see if we can see if there's any data or anything interesting there. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so one is, did we see a drop in other meta products? So was this 
did we see a drop in engagement across Facebook and WhatsApp, or is this uh, isolated to Instagram? Uh, no, it was isolated to Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Did we release a new version of Instagram at the time? Did we um, any major UI updates? A uh, brand new app? No, nothing like that. All right. Uh, when we look at the data and the reporting, are we seeing any internal errors, any spikes in bug reports or SEV or anything like that? No, nothing. Okay. Um, do we have any reports internally from any other teams where they saw either any issues in data reporting or any other areas or um, backend changes that may have caused some issues? No, it's a, it's a fair question, but uh, no, we don't have any, any reports like that. Okay. All right. Good to know. So it sounds like I think we can kind of conclude that it sounds like there wasn't an internal change since we didn't make any big updates. Um, the impact does seem to be localized to feed on Instagram and uh, we don't have any reports or any signs that there were any other internal changes or problems. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Now moving on to um, external changes caused by competitors or the, the industry or the market itself. Um, were there any major announcements that we um, uh, see or any tracking that we have on our uh, competitor tracking in terms of other apps where you'd see a large increase or movement of users? No, we, uh, we checked them and we didn't see anything significant there. Okay. And were there, um, did we see, I think we discussed, but there weren't um, any drops across uh, WhatsApp, for example, or, um, uh, Facebook in terms of similar fee type products where broadly speaking, people are just not interested in feeds anymore or things like that. No, no, no. We checked in with, uh, with our, with our colleagues on, on those teams and they, they didn't have anything there. Okay. There and, nothing to report. Okay. And, um, just thinking through, I guess, images versus video since they're consumed in, um, did we see, uh, any, large drastic difference between uh, video consumption or stories consumption, um, I should say we, normal feed consumption versus stories. Um, let's say we did, we did see stories. Um, stories saw the biggest drop in, in time spent. Yeah, okay. so the biggest drop was in stories. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so looking, thinking a little bit more about the external signs and the signals that we can get, it sounds like there was a change, like stories were impacted more, but it doesn't necessarily seem as if we lost all our stories to a, a competitor immediately or any, anything drastic like that. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now looking at environmental, um, thinking outside of just competitors and then internal to Facebook, uh, have we, do we see a country, um, a specific country or region or state or, um, uh, a drop, the drop being more significant there than anywhere else? Um, yeah, so the drop was most significant in the, in the United States, um, but it is also noticeable worldwide. Okay, great. Now, thinking about seasonality, um, have we seen this? Uh, uh, I'm imagining this, this drop is out of the norm at 10%, and it's not something that we see annually, regularly at this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not something we'd expect to see at this time of year. Okay. Now, thinking about um, uh, more of the metrics in in terms of how users engage with this, and if their external factors would have caused this, did we see a change um, in uh, cons uh, content production um, that that would have caused this? On average, no, but some accounts did see a big drop. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, is there uh, any particular type of accounts or any, any accounts um, or you know, was there any commonality across the accounts that we saw uh, the, the large drop? Um, yeah, uh, they tended to be the, the larger accounts. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. But the, it's a, okay. So that's interesting because just the large accounts, shouldn't you know impact consumption enough to drop the overall metric but it sounds like something something there is is causing issue um i'm i'm now thinking a little bit about how you know any change in content production would potentially impact consumption and, and if there's any link there uh, when it comes to um the actual feed experience did we see uh were people having the same kind of quality of feed in terms of the amount of content available to them or um, uh, the, you know, uh, checking to see if they were running out of content, any, any 
any quicker than normal? Yeah, that's a good question. So yes, um, people did have kind of less, fewer items to view um, on their feed. So there was there was a, a reduction in that. Okay, um, but you did mention that content production overall, we we didn't see a huge shift there, right? Overall, overall, it didn't it didn't drop significantly. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like there was a larger impact on stories. Um, there's an overall drop in time spent, um, along with the associated. We saw a, a bigger change in stories, and as we look at the actual quality of the feed and the content being provided to um, to, to users, uh, we did see a drop there, even though we didn't see a large scale change in content production. That's that's correct. Yeah, absolutely okay. right. So it sounds as if. Um, Maybe then these higher content producers, so they're large, you mentioned that the accounts that we saw a drop in content production were all large accounts with a, a lot of followers, um, a lot of engagement typically. That's correct, yep. Okay, so it, it sounds as if to me something, there's something around the change in content production across these creators uh, and that is causing a, kind of outsized impact across um, people's, the quality of people's feed. So, you know, a, a Beyonce or Kylie Jenner or someone large, even though they only produce but so much content out of the total ecosystem, uh, it sounds like they, we saw a drop in production there and that seems to have a, a kind of effect on people's quality, the quality of people's feed on average since so many people subscribe to these users. Yes, I think, uh, I think that's a, I think you made a very, uh, very accurate conclusion there. Yep. Okay, so looking at the conclusion, it sounds as if that um, we need to uh, dive deeper to understand kind of what what caused these content creators to um, stop producing content, uh, whether it's um, uh, and see if we can kind of re-engage them or bring them back to the platform. Uh, are there other teams that we can either you know, either the customer support team, have we seen anything come in from these large content creators, any complaints, or have we seen any um, anything unusual about these accounts in particular compared to the, the, the vast majority of um, Instagram users? Yes. Let's say that we talked to the security team and they realized there'd been a major targeted hack on, on various uh, large influencers. Damien's thought process was really well structured here and used the MISI framework to help divide the root causes into three possible buckets. Another framework that could have been useful would have been the Five Wise framework. Damien asked all the right questions and crucially knew when to keep asking high level questions and when to double down and zoom in on my response. Okay, so looking into the problem, looking at how the, sorry, this change propagated, it sounds like we saw a large drop in, in engagement. Um, a lot of this came through stories. Uh, we didn't see content production overall changed drastically on average, um, but we did see a lot of high influence uh, accounts drop and we found out now that this was targeted. So a lot of high influence uh, accounts, with a lot of followers were stopped from creating content production because they were hacked or targeted potentially by a competitor, potentially by you know, a foreign interest. And as a result, that lack of high quality content that is engaged and sought by a lot of um, users caused a drop in the quality of people's feed, especially in stories, given how quickly um, they're produced and shown, uh, but had ripple effects and brought down time spent kind of across the board because users got a lower quality feed and therefore hurt our related engagement management because um, users found less high quality content to engage with and therefore spent less time on the Instagram platform. So that, um, Sounds, um, does that sound uh, like a, a, a good conclusion and something that we could take to, to leadership and really explain and show that we have a plan of action? Yeah, I think that sounds like a, a really good conclusion. I think, uh, yeah, you've asked all the right questions and managed to, um, managed to yeah, get to a, get to a very accurate picture of, of, uh, of what, what I had in mind there. In your conclusion, you should try to take all the information you've gathered and play it back to the interviewer in a concise way as Damon does here. Once you've done that, you should be able to succinctly state your plan of action moving forward. Damon does all this and also demonstrates a good understanding of the relationship between content consumption and content production, 
which was crucial in this particular question. Okay, well, um, I think we can wrap the interview up there. Um, it, was a, it was a really good answer. I think, uh, I think you asked all the right questions. And um, yeah, it was fun getting to the bottom of that um, mysterious metric change. This was a very strong answer from Damien, showing a well-structured thought process. Dividing his root causes into three buckets, he drew logical conclusions after going through each, rather than waiting for the end of the interview. This enabled him to progress through the question in a methodical manner, constructing his conclusions in a logical arc by building one on top of the other. You'll have noticed that Damien asked a lot of questions, and that's fine in this kind of interview. Don't be afraid to ask even more than he did if you need to. Overall, a really comprehensive approach from Damien, very well executed. So, um, yeah, thanks, Damien. I hope you enjoyed it. No, I definitely did. It was um, interesting to think about uh, kind of how uh, the a change across a small influential group can have this kind of ripple effect across the entire ecosystem. But I um, yeah. really appreciate the time and uh, hopefully I, answer, I was able to answer and address all of your questions and um, we'll be able to move forward at Meta. Hello, I really hope you found that useful. If you did, you can like and subscribe and why not come visit us at igotanoffer.com. There you can find more videos, useful frameworks and question guides all completely free. And you can also book expert feedback one-to-one -one with our coaches from Google, Meta, Amazon, etc. Thank you and good luck with your interview.